Hey gang! Today we're going to be creating an aquaponics system so that we can urban farm vegan, organic, non-GMO, BPA-free vegetables right in the comfort of our own basement. We're going to be creating a little ecosystem right here in the bathroom where the fish waste will feed the plants and the plants will filter the water for the fish. We have to remember, fish are our friends, so we have to do the best we can to make sure they don't die. All right, let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So here's a quick overview of the stuff we'll be using today. I'll go into more detail during the build and then everything will also be listed down in the description. Also, Ryobi drill, 18 volt lithium ion. That's not the report important thing, I'm a Ryobi guy. The important thing is the hole saw. You could probably get away with, if you're careful, with like a utility knife, but if you don't have a hole saw, just get a hole saw, they're cheap. I'll leave it in the description. We have our Hydrotin, 25 liters. I don't know how many gallons that is for you Americans. We've got some PVC pipe, varying sizes. We'll go into more detail. Our grow bed, 36 liters. Again, don't know how many quarts or whatever the heck you Americans use. But our, our pump, water pump, uh, some bulkheads and some fittings. Water conditioner so we don't kill the fish. Remember we love fish. And some varying sizes of hoses, 10 gallon aquarium, and some substrate for the bottom. All right, let's get into the build. Okay, so first thing I wanna work on here is our grow bed. It's pretty simple. We're going to install a water return pipe from the bottom. So any water entering into the grow bed can return back down to the aquarium. And it's easy to do. All we need to do is cut a hole, install the fitting so we can install the pipe. So let's take a look here at some of the different seals we can use to seal the return pipe in the grow bed. This one's a pretty common one, it's a uni seal. Basically you just drill the, the correct size hole for the, uh, for the grommet, jam it in there, and it's a watertight seal. I put this in a plastic, uh, a thinner plastic container, just testing it, and I found sometimes because the plastic's so thin, when it flexes, you get a little drip. So I'm not gonna use that today. I'd probably advise not to use it for this situation. I know they're good in the, like your five gallon pails, but I'm not gonna use those for this system. These are bulkhead fittings. So basically you drill your hole and then jam this through. Drill your hole, have the gasket on the water side, put it in and then just screw it on and clamp it. And these are super watertight. This one has a barb fitting on the bottom. You'll see a bunch of different designs. I like this one. This is a half inch, because I'm gonna be using half inch for this system. Slip slip it's called. So it's the same idea. This one only comes with one gasket, but it's nice because you just take your half inch pipe, it fits tight, no problems. And then, boom. And you just clamp it on. So I see some guys use their systems and they'll have, uh, some of these come with like a threaded portion on both sides and you can thread in pipe, like you can get threaded half inch uh, PVC pipe. This is an irrigation pipe for sprinkler systems. This is just standard half inch PVC pipe. But yeah, so some guys will screw in and make all these adapters. This is easy, slip, slip, done. So let's get that installed. Okay, so before I make my cut, I'm just kind of mocking everything out here. I have a just a simple plastic stand, so my aquarium's gonna go underneath, grow bed on top, and this is where I want the downpipe to be for the return, just in the back corner there. So this container I'm just using to keep the media from getting back into the uh, return pipe. So that's how I want it, so I'm gonna mark that and then cut. Okay, so I just traced out the, the outside of this media guard here so that we can kind of get our best guess of the middle. And for what hole we're using, it says on the bag for this size of bulkhead we're gonna be using the one and one eighth of an inch hole. Some of them will tell you, some of them won't. If that doesn't tell you, try to just match up roughly the same size. You just need to keep it underneath like the size of that gasket area. Or else you're dinked. So let's drill our hole. So 
Perfect. I'm just going to clean that up here with a utility knife. All right, now that that's cleaned up a little better, I'm just going to take the fitting, work it in. A little tight, but that's good. Make sure the gasket's on your inside, your water side. And take the fitting. Usually they're good if you just hand tighten them. You might need to go with pliers maybe an eighth of a turn. You don't want to crack this. It's not really so important this, your container, but you don't want to break the fitting either. So what we're going to do here now is just drill a hole in the shelf so that the bulkhead can fit through nice. so bad. So I guess I should have mentioned this before too, why I'm using half inch. This has a, it's a, we're using a smaller system, so half inch will give us a good flow rate out to drain the tank. Obviously if you go larger diameter, you're gonna have a quicker flow rate out. If you go smaller, it's gonna drain slower. So that's why I'm using half inch. It should be fine for a system of this size. And then what we're gonna do now is we're going to mark the height of our return pipe and that's going to determine how much water sits in this bed. So I'm thinking I wanted about three inches and then I'll have about an inch, inch and a half of a dry zone up here. You can't have the water height too high or else the hydrotin on top will get wet, it'll grow algae and then also the plants are going to die because you can't have them, the roots fully submerged in water all the time. So it needs that dry zone. So what we're going to do here is I have a coupler and this coupler is just going to go on top to give me a little bit more diameter just to get the flow of water draining back. So we're going to be using a bell siphon system and I'll show you how to build that. And essentially what's going to happen with the bell siphon is once the water reaches the level you set, it's going to start siphoning the water out of the bed and drop your water level down. That way you get a good complete circulation of your water and it gives the roots a little bit more oxygen and it just flows flows better so I like that system better so let's measure this up I wanted three inches so what we need to do here too is put this in our slip mark the height of that so that we um, we're not cutting off too much and have a lower water level and then this is going to go on and we can just mark it and measure. I already know it's going to take up about an inch, so we need to also move our three inch line down so that we can have this extra height and we won't be way too high, if that makes sense to you. So, what am I doing here? Let's mark it. So I want to go up three inches. Come down about an inch for a coupler. And then we also have this little bit area up here. So yeah, that should be good. That's gonna give us about a three inch height. So we're gonna cut off here. Okay, let's test fit that, make sure our measurements are good. Three inches, I like it. On to the next thing. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make our bell for the siphon and it's gonna go over top of our drain pipe. So, kind of a rule of thumb of making a bell siphon is this pipe should be 
twice the diameter as your return pipe. This is a little larger, but I'm gonna use it anyways just because it's what I have laying around and I know it's gonna work, it just might not be as efficient. But typically, this is twice the size as your return pipe. And all this is is two inch PVC pipe and then I have a cap on top. And this is just leftover stuff I had kicking around or else I would go buy a little bit smaller stuff. So what we're gonna do here is I want this to just be a little bit above the bed. It's not a big deal. Um, it just really needs to have a gap above your return pipe. So I'm gonna cut this up. I'm gonna cut some water holes in it and then I'll explain to you how that's all working for the siphon action. Okay, so I've cut it to height and then I've cut my slits in it so that the water can get in. And these slits are gonna determine the height of the water that's left in the grow bed after the siphoning action has taken place. So if you want about an inch in there, put the slits up about an inch. So that's gonna work like that. And then next I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this bottle up to go around this stuff. So when all the hydrotin's in here, it's not going to push up against it too much or I can remove it to inspect it and stuff like that. So, Okay, so I used a hole saw, cut a hole in the bottom here that's larger than that. You could use a utility knife and just cut the bottom off. Then I just cut the top off with the utility knife. Goes over top, that way I can still access the siphon. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Some people use PVC pipe, but I don't wanna go buy, you know, what a three inch section of PVC pipe that I only need a little bit for. So that's looking good. We're going to put this up top and then start working on our return for the siphon. And yeah, I know it might not make that much sense. Um, I'll explain how the whole siphoning action works after. And I also have another video on it that I'll link in the description so that you can see how that's all working. So basically what we need to do now is make a return pipe come down so that it can enter into our fish tank. So as you can see, I have my 14 inch section here of uh, return pipe and I added an extra little 90 degree on there just to splash the water up against the back of the tank. That way it's not going to disturb the fishes too much, but we're still gonna get that water returning and oxygenating the water. And then up here, I forgot to mention to cut some holes into your media guard just so the water can enter in there. So what I'm gonna do now is get my hydrotin up into the, the grow bed. So I took the hydrotin outside already and then I uh, washed it off real good because this stuff is really dirty and you don't want that contaminating the uh, your, your water source there. So wash it off really good. I'll put a clip up of how I did it and get that really clean before you add it into your system because it's gonna make a huge mess if you don't. So let's do that. And then I'll also add in my, my substrate for the bottom of the fish tank here. And I'm also gonna wash this off before I add that in.
So as you can see, the water in the tank is very clear, and that's because we did take that extra time to clean the hydrogen and rinse off the substrate for the bottom of the tank. If not, it'd be super murky, there'd be a ton of clay in the water, it's not good for the fish. I also just want to mention that this is tap water that I did put into the system and it does need to be treated. You can treat it with this stuff you can find at an aquarium store online. Uh, there might be an aquaponics type, just make sure that there's not anything funky in it. Some of them have like, uh, like kind of fish uh, additives to it. And basically what that's going to do is remove the chlorine and chloramine from the tap water. If you're on well water, you won't have the chlorine or chloramine in it. Or if you have a reverse osmosis filter, which is the best, you won't have that in there. Some people say you can bubble out the chlorine, which you can, it does, it does take a little while or put it in sunlight. And I've found conflicting information if the chloramine can be bubbled out. Some say it can, it just takes a ton of time. Some say it can't. So I'm not gonna mess around with it because it will kill the fish and it's not good for the plants either. So I'm just gonna add the additive. Also, we need to cycle this system for three to six weeks, introducing some ammonia to the system so you can get that nitrification so that the plants can get fed and also the ammonia is not gonna kill the fish. So we're gonna fishless cycle it. I'll make a video on that too. And and I did use a 3 8 hose coming off of that water pump. And I drilled a hole and I kind of slitted it, put a little slit in there, just so it's not gonna go anywhere, it's not gonna fly out. And then what's happening here is that's filling up our, our bed, our grow bed. Once it reaches that level of the return pipe, it's gonna start flowing down the return pipe, creating a siphon action. And as it does that, the water level is still increasing and it's gonna block off the pipe, create a vacuum inside, and the, that's the bell siphon. So that vacuum is actually gonna pull all the water out of the bed, the water level is going, going to drop and return back down to the tank. And I'll get a video of that happening. I do have a more in depth with a clear system and you can see all, how that's working. I'll put that video in the uh, description, like I said. There we go, it's siphoning out. starts cutting itself off and the process starts all over again. Also with the grow bed here it is see-through. I'm going to add some tape around there or block it out so that the light doesn't get in and you know create algae here and uh, stop the light from reaching the roots. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep updated with how the system goes when we do the cycling, add our fish, add our plants and drop a like, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.